Hi, I am Dr. Sakir Mansoor and uh, today I will discuss with you the anatomy of the wrist joint. Yes, so first you see these are the eight carpal bones. You could see here as well. And this is radius and the ulna bones of the forearm. And the wrist joint is formed between the radius and the lateral three bones of the proximal row of the um, carpal bones. Here you could see. And you note that proximal wrist crease is the uh, demarcation point of the wrist joint and here you could see as well it is said as it is known as radiocarpal joint as well you see the screen line for that forming here right so you see ulna doesn't take part in the formation of the wrist joint you see again another picture this is the anterior view this is posterior view and these are the eight carpal bones. And these are the eight carpal bones. This is enlarged view. And you could see this is the red line is the wrist joint. Another picture for uh, interest. Is, these are the eight carpal bones. So the type of the wrist joint is a biaxial synovial giant of ellipsoid or condylioid variety. Wrist joint position is demarcated approximately by the line joining the styloid process of ulna and radius or else by the proximal wrist crease. Wrist or corpus is the proximal segment of the hands composed of eight carpal bones, I told you already, which make a joint proximally with the forearm by means of the wrist joint and distally articulate with all the five metacarpals. I've shown you already. This is these these are the metacarpal one two three four five, and these are the giant with the distal row of the carpal bones. Here you could see as well another view the posterior, and you could see this as well here the same thing the metacarpals and these are the carpal bones. This is again for interest another view, another picture. This is another detailed picture. And uh, I told you ulna doesn't uh, participate in the formation of the wrist joint. The distal end of the radius and the articular disc of the distal radioulnar joint makes articulation with the proximal row of the carpal bones, excluding the pisiform. So which bones participate in the formation of the wrist of the radiocarpal joint? These are the scaphoid lunate and the triquitral bones. Fibrocartilaginous disc. Grip lower ends of the ulna radius together and the disc segregates the wrist joint from the distal radial ulnar joint. The triangular articular disc is intracapsular. Pisiform bone primarily is a sesamoid bone and acts to enhance the leverage of the flexor carpi ulnaris. Pisiform is placed in a plane that is anterior to the rest of the carpal bones and it articulates with the triquetral only. Here you could see the bones. Again, you can see that. I've shown you already a lot of pictures. Right? Here's the radius, Allah, and this, this is the formation of the mid-carpal joint, and this is the wrist joint. See, here you could see. This is we are discussing today. So let's uh, talk about the joint capsule of the wrist joint, fibrous layer of the giant capsule surrounds the wrist joint. It gets attached proximally to the distal ends of the aligned radius and distally to the proximal row of the carpals, the scaphoid unit in the trochidrum, triquetral or trochidrum. Internal surface of the fibrous layer of the giant capsule is lined by synovial membrane and is attached to the margins of the articular surfaces. Numerous synovial folds exist there. You see, see this in picture. Let me zoom in for you. You could see this. So these are the I mean uh, ligaments, various and the capsule and the uh, synovial membrane uh, view for that. I think this picture is very clear for that. Did you could see that? This is the fibrous layer of the giant capsule here. This is that fibrous layer of the giant capsule. This and this demarcated. And this is the synovial membrane, right? Synovial membrane covering dorsal radiocarpal ligaments. And this is also the synovial folds. So 
ligaments of the wrist joint the fibrous layer of the joint capsule is made stronger by powerful dorsal and palmar radiocarpal ligaments let's have a look, look at that these two ligaments here you could see this is the palmar radiocarpal ligament palmar radiocarpal ligament and here you could see this is the dorsal radiocarpal ligament right it covers the synovial membrane and the synovial fold. Palmar radiocarpal ligaments traverse from the radius bone to the two rows of the carpal bones. They are tough and are directed in such way that the hand follows the radius during supination of the forearm. Very important point. Dorsal radiocarpal ligaments follow same direction so that the hand goes around with radius as pronation of the forearm is carried out right so medially joint capsule also gets stronger by the ulnar collateral ligament which has an its attachment to the ulnar styloid process and the triquitrum laterally joint capsule also gets stronger by the radial collateral ligament which acts it's it, which has its attachment to the radial styloid process and the scaphoid bone. Let's have a look at it again. The these ligaments, the collateral ligaments. These are the you know you can see the direction of the the five these uh, uh, ligament uh, fibers, and uh, this is the ulnar collateral ligament. You could see that clearly ulnar collateral ligament. This is the, I uh, show you palmar radiocarpal ligament and uh, moving down and uh, you could see there, uh, again you can see this is the, uh, you know, snow wheel membrane. The stability of the joint relies on the capsular ligament aided by the various long tendons crossing it. Not many dislocations take place here at the wrist joint. So it's very stable and hardly it gets dislocated. The most stable position is that of mild extension. The wrist is placed in little adduction and extension in the resting position. Very important point to note. What is the resting position of the wrist joint? little adduction and extension so important relations of the wrist joint anteriorly of course anteriorly is lying the um, flexor compartment of the forearm and uh, obviously anterior to that uh, is formed uh, over here uh, the um, flexor retinaculum and the forms a carpal tunnel some structures pass beneath it and some um, over it so all would be related uh, anterior to that here here you see tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus flexor carpi radialis flexor carpi ulnaris flexor pollicis longus and ulnar and median nerves so you could see this is uh, the superficial muscles is the, uh, these are the intermediate and these are the deep muscle layers and you could see these are the muscle extends carpi radialis longus and ex flexor carpi this extensor is behind posterior relation flexor carpi radialis and uh, flexor carpi ulnaris right these are the main um, uh, muscle in the superficial uh, group passing over the wrist joint and this is a flexor digitorum superficialis and uh, here you could see as well the flexor digitorum profundus and also the flexor pollicis longus. So posteriorly, what happens? Tendon of the, you could see the picture first instead of discussing that. This is the, you know, anterior and these structures are posterior to the wrist joint. This is, you could see the formation of the um, uh, this uh, disjoint and the cross section over here and you could see uh, this is the hypothenor eminence this is the uh, you know thenar eminence and you could see this is median nerve passing over it in the carpal tunnel right and uh, anteriorly now you can see 
these uh, all the muscles and posteriorly what happens let's see posteriorly first we will have to see the uh, extensor muscles extensor carpi ulnaris tendon extensor digiti minimi extensor digitorum and the extensor pollicis longus extensor pollicis previs extensor pollicis longus so these tendons as well so these are the uh, extensor tendons and uh, pass, passing posterior to the wrist joint and so radial artery is lateral to that and uh, let's see what other structures uh, pass uh, uh, to that you could also see this extensor pollicis longus tendon so these are the posterior muscles list. I've told you already almost all of them. And the medial is the dorsal cutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve. Movements of the wrist joint. Movements occurring at the wrist joint are enhanced by added uh, small movements taking place at the intercarpal and the midcarpal joints. Movements are extension flexion, adduction abduction, ulnar deviation, the radial deviation, the circumduction. As a shape of the articular surfaces are ellipsoid, rotation here is not possible. Like of the rotation is compensated by movements of the supination and pronation. So very unique movements. Total range of flexion is almost 80 degree, of which maximum proportion takes place at the mid-carpal joint. Total range of extension is less than that. It's about 60 degree. The maximum proportion taking place at the wrist joint itself. You could see the pictures as well. This is extension, this is flexion. And you could see this is extension, this is flexion. This is the, you know, adduction, this is abduction. And this is inferior view. Let's see the zoomed in pictures. Extension, this is the midline, you could see. And this is the extension. This is a flexion of the wrist joint. And these are the bony view. You could see the position of the bones what is happening there and here you could see this this is the um, abduction and adduction so adduction mainly occurs at the wrist joint whereas the abduction takes place from the neutral position involves a mid carpal joint circumduction of the hand comprises of the consecutive flexion adduction extension and abduction so let's see the interesting topic of muscles producing the movements. Of course, uh, the carpi muscle of the forearm predominantly produce movement at the wrist joint. So movement at the wrist joint, uh, this is uh, brought about uh, uh, mainly by the flexor. Uh, uh, I told you carpi muscle of the forearm, tendon of these carpi muscles stretch along the four corners of the wrist. Thus, uh, bear a comparison with a cross section of wrist to a rectangle and get be being attached to bases of the metacarpals. You could see this. This is the inferior view of the uh, wrist joint. This is, um, you know, radius. This is Allah. So, of course, this is Allah. It's not taking part in the formation of the wrist joint, but the muscle also act over here. This is one corner acted upon by the flexor carpi radialis this is abduction and also the here extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis pulling in these directions and over here in adduction what happens this is the flexor carpi ulnaris pulling in that direction and this extensor carpi ulnaris puts pulling, pulling it in that direction right so Flexor carpi ulnaris does so through pisohamate ligament, which is uh, a prolongation of the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon, as the pisiform is reputed as a sesamoid bone within the tendon. So, this is the way with it. And uh, this is, you could see, these are adduction and abduction, also focus on the flexion and the extension. Right? So, these are the rectangle formed at the inferior view of the uh, wrist joint comparison. So extension of wrist joint is produced by the flexor of the by the extensor carpal narus, extensor carpal radialis longus, 
and extensor corpi radialis previs aided by the extensor of the fingers and the thumb. Flexion of the wrist joint is produced by the flexor corpi lanaris and flexor corpi radialis aided by the flexors of the fingers and the thumb. Abductor pollicis longus and the palmaris longus. Adduction of the wrist joint is 45 degree is produced by the concurrent contraction of the flexor carpal nerus and flexor carpal extensor carpal nerus and flexor carpal nerus. Abduction, the wrist joint, is brought about by the flexor carpal radialis, abductor pollicis longus, extensor carpal radialis longus, and extensor carpal radialis brevis. It is restricted only to about 15 degree due to the projecting stylar process of radius. Most of the Acts require a little amount of wrist flexion. Nonetheless, tight grip, that is clenching the fist, needs extension at the wrist joint. Very important point. Tight grip, which clenching of the fist, needs extension at the wrist joint. Here you could see again, you see, I told you already shown you, this is extension, flexion from the midline. And here you could see this is the adduction and this is abduction. And the blood supply, branches of the falling artery supply blood uh, to the wrist joint, palmar carpal branch and the dorsal carpal branch. Uh, sorry, palmar carpal arch and the dorsal carpal arch. Nurse supply of the wrist joint. Nurse that supply the wrist joint are branches of the posterior, the dorsal intracious branch of the radial nerve. And the anterior intracious branch of the median nerve, and in the last ulnar nerve, deep and dorsal branches, two branches of the ulnar nerve. So I thank you very much for listening uh, to my lecture. Hope you like it. If you like, do subscribe and support. Thank you very much. Stay tuned.